What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because we're doing something a little bit different. In today's video, we're going to actually be having a little bit of a discussion. And in that discussion, what I'm going to be talking about is essentially a new path that Konami's taking towards legacy support. And you guys are going to understand what I mean when we get into today's video. But the new gate guardian stuff has made it so that there's a lot of potential with new support that comes out in the future. Now, if you guys do enjoy these kind of discussion videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We have a five days a week here on the channel but we do a full 10 videos per week five long videos five short videos you guys are going to get a little bit of everything also let me know in the comment section down below before we start this video what deck do you think is going to get support next and i'm talking about legacy decks not just any deck but what anime style deck is going to get the next support i want to know what you guys think now i hope you guys enjoyed today's video and with that let's get into the discussion all right, so just before we get started with today's video, I do want to say that this video is not going to necessarily be showcasing these cards and going super in detail with the new Gate Guardian support. I'm going to be just talking about their effects and how this concept that Konami decided to roll with with this archetype has a lot of potential with other future archetypes, especially with decks that are from the anime, right? So first of all, I just want to say this, this artwork right here is absolutely amazing. I love this artwork. It's beautiful. But let's get down to the cards here and I'm going to explain them just a little bit, but then I I'm gonna really get into what I want to get into right so basically one thing I want to talk about is how Konami translated these cards from the anime into the TCG with this new support and the first thing we're gonna be talking about is labyrinth heavy tank so I believe the actual name in the TCG was just labyrinth tank and this card was not a fusion monster in the anime it just was a normal summonable card and yes I know at that time in Yu-Gi-Oh tribute summoning and stuff was not really a thing at that point so they could just normal summon high level monsters but that's a really cool thing because again it kind of builds in with that anime kind of aspect of it where it's kind of like you can just normal summon this card without tributing which is i think is really cool right now the effect of this card is kind of cool for the archetype but again in terms of the anime i really like the fact that they made this not a fusion monster because i believe in the tcg originally it was a fusion monster but of course in the anime it was just played as a non-fusion and it was just played as a normal summonable card right so i think that aspect is really cool and then another card over here that i think is absolutely super cool as well as shadow cool of the labyrinth this card has a really cool effect where it's like you can banish this card from the graveyard destroy that opponent's monster so why is this effect kind of cool and why do i want to bring up these like random small effects that the cards have well the whole point of this is because i really think konami is doing a really good job at translating what these cards did in the anime into the tcg albeit a little bit different because of course they weren't banishing cards from the graveyard in the anime but shadow ghoul over here had a really cool effect in the anime where it would just be hiding in the labyrinth wall so you couldn't really attack it and i believe joey had to use the kunai with chain to wrap it up before or they can attack it i know that's all anime shenanigans but the really cool thing about this card is it mimics it in a sense where it's kind of like okay this card is unattackable it's a card that's in your graveyard your opponent is not going to be interacting with this card but you can banish it to destroy a monster your opponent controls so it's kind of like one of those things where if you guys remember the scene in the anime shadow ghoul just runs around in the labyrinth and then just pops up attacks a monster and then jumps back into the labyrinth so that's a really cool thing about this card where i think it just translates what the anime card did and then now into like a tcg version of the card right so all these cards do that the really cool thing about all these cards and this is kind of the whole concept of this video and i'm just going to talk about these cards first and then i'm going to talk about other things with you guys and more in detail with you guys but i want to talk about these cards is because konami is finally doing something where they're really taking these anime cards and then putting them into the tcg and then translating them really well into a way where they can be played in the tcg now one thing i really want to talk about and one thing that i really like is the gate guardians combined i really like that it's a fusion monster and it's a contact fusion all of these different gate guardian pieces over here i think it makes a lot of sense because if you guys remember in the anime all you needed was the three pieces and then they would just fuse together to become gate guardian so of course gate guardian combined just makes a lot of sense because what you're going to be doing is you're going to be using the three names over here sanga kazajin and suijin to make the combined right and on top of that the really cool thing is if you guys remember in the anime as well if they got rid of one of the pieces i believe the first piece they got rid of is suijin in the anime when they attacked over suijin i can't remember exactly how they got over it but once it was gone and over then then you still had the two pieces linked to each other. I believe it was Kazujin and Senga, right? So the really cool thing about this is Konami really took that into consideration and brought it to the TCG. This is essentially, I think, what was in the anime. I don't believe at any point Kazujin and Suijin and then Suijin and uh, Sanga were combined. I don't think these two combinations were found in the anime, but I think it just makes a lot of sense because the anime effect, the way the anime works, is that if one of the pieces is destroyed, it's fine because the other two pieces are still combined, which is really cool, right? So 
that's a really cool thing about all of these fusion monsters over here. It just makes a lot more sense to, for them to be contact fusion monsters in the TCG because that's kind of how they worked in the anime. And again, I don't want to get too much in detail with what these cards do. There's specifically one that I want to talk about, which is over here, Gate Guardian of Wind and Water. If you guys also remember from the anime, Suijin, I believe, or was it was it uh, Kazijin? One of them had the effect where it's kind of like, I think Yugi uses Mirror Force and then they protect from themselves from the Mirror Force and then it gets bounced off to something else. So it kind of has like that built-in protection, right? And the really cool thing about this card, which is kind of like insane when you think about it, it's once per chain when your opponent activates a spell or trap card or effect on the field, you can quick effect negate that effect. So why that's cool is because in the anime, these cards, it was one of these two had that like built-in protection and then they're kind of putting that built-in protection into the TCG, which just replicates exactly what it did in the anime, which is really cool, right? So I just really wanted to talk about these three cards. I think they make a lot of sense. Labyrinth Wall Shadow is a card that I think essentially was the fusion summon of Labyrinth Wall and Shadow Ghoul in the anime. So they made this a spell card or a field spell because in the anime, if you think about it, Labyrinth Wall was the field spell and then Labyrinth Wall Shadow was when you fused Shadow Ghoul with the Labyrinth Wall so that I could run around and do its shenanigans, right? So that's the really cool thing about this is where it's kind of like, yes, it was a fusion card in the anime, but it doesn't make sense to make it a fusion monster in the TCG because this effectively was the field in the anime. So making it a field spell works in the TCG. This card is not too much important. The Ryuyoko is not too much important as well. I mean, I know they use this card in the anime, but Jirai Gumu, I really want to talk about as well because in the anime, I'm pretty sure they set Jirai Gumu, the monster, as a trap card. So when I think it was either Voice Raider or Celtic Guardian, one of them walks over it and activates the Jirai Gumu trap, which then attacks their monster. Wait, Joey, look out! Too late! He activated my trap! So this is kind of like in resemblance to that where in the anime, it was actually a trap card, right? It was it was a monster, yes, but it was set as if it was a trap card. And then it was a trap when your opponent walked over it, boom, it attacked over it. And this is kind of in resemblance to that. That's the really cool thing about this archetype. I really want to talk about how they translated this from the anime to the TCG so well. Now, why do I want to talk about all that? Well, if you really think about a lot of the cards that in the anime, what they did, it was completely different than from what they do in the TCG. Some of the interactions in the anime were completely different as well so you can imagine moving forward imagine they're giving new support for old school decks right I, I can't think of any off the top of my head right now but any of those kind of decks especially from the dual monsters era i guess some in the gx as well where it's kind of like all these cards were really cool in the anime they did certain things they interacted certain ways but then in the tcg labyrinth tank was a fusion monster that you essentially could never summon uh shadow ghoul i think was like a level five was it a normal monster? I can't remember if it was a normal monster or not, but it really didn't do anything for you, right? All these cards in the TCG at the time, especially Gate Guardian, like Gate Guardian at the time was kind of like you had to have all three monsters on the board. I think you had to have Gate Guardian in your hand. You had to tribute all three pieces to summon the Gate Guardian, which is just absolutely insanely hard to do, especially in the TCG. But in the anime, if you think about how it worked in the anime is you didn't need to have Gate Guardian in your hand. You just needed to get to the three pieces. And I'm pretty sure in the anime as well, they were set as spell or trap cards because they came out in their little uh, coffins, right? And then all, once all three coffins were on the field then they made the gate guardian and that makes sense because if you think about this archetype this gate guardian can be used by banishing the above cards from a hand field or graveyard right so as long as you essentially have these cards somewhere and a lot of the other cards also place them as uh, spell or traps uh, I can't remember which one it is it says once per turn in your main phase you can place one of your Sangas, Kazajin or Suijin that is banished or in your hand or deck face up in your spell and trap card zone as a continuous spell so it's kind of like that thing where it's like in the anime it was a spell card kind of until they were summoned into Gate Guardian. Essentially, the whole point of me talking about this right now is because I want to know what you guys think, first of all, what other archetypes could get uh, retrained like this, where they get retrained and they kind of do things that they did in the anime. Gate Guardian was a perfect example, and I think Konami did a really good job with this archetype. Yes, this archetype is not going to be meta or super competitive or any of that kind of stuff, right? But it's really cool how when they actually retrained these cards, they made them so that they were anime-based, and they really took after the anime effects of the card, and then just made them TCG legal. And I thought that was really cool. I think it's a concept that in the future, Konami could be playing on as well. I mean, do you remember that scene where Mammoth Graveyard was fused with Blois Ultimate Dragon, and then it lost a attack each turn. Now, I'm not saying that's something that's going to happen in the TCG, but you know, those kind of weird anime moments that, you know, could never actually happen in the real Yu-Gi-Oh game, they could translate it into cards. I think when, um, when it was, uh, the, the guardian of guardian of stone, I can't remember the, 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 the stone guy, Yugi's monster, 2100 defense or big defense guy. And then he attacked the moon against, um, against Mako Tsunami. And then they made a card called attack the moon, which was kind of based off that anime moment. I just really think it's cool when they make these cards kind of based off what 
they did in the anime or how they worked on the anime right so i think the fact that this entire archetype works really well and it just really does have that anime feel to it i think that's really cool because now if you're wanting to play this uh you know even just a casual level with your friends it really feels like you're playing like the paradox brothers it really feels like you're playing in the anime because you're getting the effects from the anime you're getting the the concept from the anime which is really cool and and again hopefully in the future we can get more archetypes like this if you guys have any other ones that you guys can think of let me know but i just want to say konami did a great job in my opinion with this archetype did a great job with translating what these cards did in the anime and how they kind of worked in the anime into the tcg and honestly on top of all of that i just I, this artwork is amazing i love this artwork it's absolutely insane all of these artworks are really really nice they really feel like they're well thought out which i really really like like look at this artwork man ryoko in the artwork honestly wasn't just that great in general oh and the really cool thing about this one jirai gumo i just noticed is it's coming out of the ground which it came out of the ground in the anime as well so like i don't know i just think this stuff is really cool i think this is potential for konami to do this in the future with other archetypes when they retrain it they're like hey let's make it more anime-esque so let me know what you guys think but i'm really liking the direction konami's going with this so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy i know i talked a little bit in depth about the gate guardian cards and how they kind of translated from the anime into the tcg but that was a really cool thing about this archetype the fact that konami did a really cool thing where they really took the anime effects and then made it tcg playable and i really hope that in the future for new legacy support they continue to do things like this because i just think it's very very cool and i just think it brings the decks to life which is really nice even if they're not the most competitive it does give some life and energy to these decks which i really enjoy now let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below for this kind of new support but also like this video and subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already we upload five days a week but we do a full 10 videos per week five long videos five short videos you guys are gonna get a little bit of everything so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video thank you guys all for watching we're almost at 10,000, i believe in my spanko squad so thank you guys again and with that spanko signing out peace